Okay, let's get to it. Hopefully this will help explain what the Delta 5 race timer is doing and what all the settings mean. This is a graph that represents what the timer sees. On the left is RSSI, on the bottom is time. Now the first pass is very important to the timer because this is where it establishes the trigger that's used for all other future passes. When a quad flies over the timer, the RSSI will look something like this. Now, disclaimer here, the RSSI curve isn't actually this smooth, but for this example, it'll help keep the visualization simpler. We're also going to use the default settings, the calibration offset of 8, calibration threshold of 95, trigger threshold of 40. You can go into the system and adjust these numbers depending on the RF environment of where you're using the timer. So what's happening? The system is first looking for the peak value of RSSI. In this case, it has a value of 275. The other thing that the timer is doing is that it also records the time taken at the peak. This represents when the quad is closest to the timer, and in theory, when the quad is going through the gate. So what do the other numbers mean? Well, first let's look at the calibration offset, which has a value of eight. The system takes the peak and subtracts the calibration offset and has a value of 267, and that's how it defines the trigger. Now, the calibration threshold is also taken off that trigger line, and in this case, of 95, and establishes a value of 172. So, what's happening here? So, it's a two-step process. When the RSSI rises and the system finds a peak, it establishes the trigger. Now, on the, the far side of the curve, the system is also looking for the RSSI to fall by a certain amount. In this case, the RSSI has to go below the calibration threshold of 172. It has to go below that value in order for it to count as a good pass. So what's happening on future passes? So on the first pass, we've already established that the trigger value is at 267. It remembers that. So the quad flies through the gate, it's going around the track, and it's coming back around. And in this, this time around, the RSSI looks something like that. In this case, again, the timer is looking for the peak. In this case, the, the peak value is at 293. Uh, let's say the quad flew a little bit closer to the timer, so the value is higher, but again, it's taking the time value at that peak. So once again, just like before, the system is also looking for the trigger threshold, the fall on the back side of the curve. It, the RSSI value has to fall by a certain amount in order for the pass to be counted as good. So why is there different values for calibration threshold and trigger threshold? Well, we do that because the very first pass is important to the timer and it establishes the trigger that's going to be used for all future passes. So the calibration threshold makes the first pass requirements a little more stringent. The trade-off there is that on the very first pass, it causes a little bit more of a delay for the system because it's looking for the fall to be a little bit greater. Now you can go in and adjust all these values to tweak it to your liking and your RF environment. So what does that mean for tuning? So for the calibration offset, if you were to increase it, obviously your trigger value would be lower and it will make your system a little more sensitive to the RSSI. Same thing goes for um, adjusting the calibration threshold and, or the trigger threshold. If you lower those numbers, 
the amount that the RSSI has to fall on the backside becomes much less and makes the system a little more sensitive. Well, hopefully that um, helps explain what the settings does and uh, you can you know, tune your timer and set it up for your ICES.